It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. Hoppy turns on the heat. For years, old John Pierce had built up his bank in Clover Springs through honest dealings and a faith in his fellow men. He prospered and had two sons to take over his duties, if need be. While riding his favorite horse in the mountains, accompanied by his younger son, Scotty, an accident occurred, and the father was killed while the son was brought home an invalid. The doctor said his back was broken. The younger son, Jim, then came home from the city to take over and care for the bedridden Scotty. Feel better, Scotty? Good as I'll ever feel, Jim. Lying here like a stone around your neck. Oh, come on. Doc says if you lie still and let nature take its course, you'll, your back will mend and then you'll be as good as new. <laughs> come on, let's see that old smile, Scotty. They can't lick the two of us. Oh, but I've made a terrible mess of the bank since Dad left us. Well, nothing we can't straighten out. I've had a month on the books now, going way back to where Dad started. Well, that's what I mean, Jim. Me lying here unable to move and... You doing all the work. Ah, forget it. You do the same for me, Scotty. How long has Watts been handing out the bank's money to shuffle Duncan for his dance hall? About four months now. Well, none of it's been paid back. I know. All we have is his notes. Watts loaned it to him against my wish. Well, all that's going to be settled today. I'm going to the city tomorrow and bring back the auditors to go over the books. I'm afraid you're stepping into a buzzsaw, Jim. Maybe if you gave Shuffle some time... He's had you... all the time he's going to get. I'm through coddling Watts. And I'm not going to lose our depositor's money on account of Shuffle Duncan. Who's that? Now, take it easy, old man. I sent for Watts and Shuffle Duncan for a showdown. You don't know what you're doing, now, Jim. Now, don't worry your head. This is the only kind of persuasion they know. I'll leave the door open so you can hear what goes on. Please, be careful. Come in, gentlemen. Well. Sounds solemn like what? <laughs> I mean it to be. Sit down, please. I'll stand up. What? Uh, Why, well, yes, I I'll sit. Thanks. Well, I guess there's no need of wasting time, gentlemen. It's straight business meeting. Now, look here, Jim. You got my notes on that money, and on I don't... money you had no business getting. Well, as manager of the bank, Jim, it was my duty to invest the bank's funds to the best advantage of the depositors. That doesn't mean to pour it down a rat hole. Now, wait a minute, you upstart. The Red Garter Dance Hall is no rat hole. And furthermore... That's I... debatable. However, the 14000 you owe the bank is due right now, Shuffle. What? How do you think I can raise money like that? Oh, yes, Jim. Isn't that rather abrupt? How you get it or where you get it is no fair of mine. I want that money by Saturday. Saturday? That's right. I'm going to the city tomorrow and bring back the auditors. Huh? Clean out the old desk and put the bank where it belongs. Auditors? You mean they'll be here this weekend? That's right. We'll see how much more Shuffle Duncan owes besides the 14000 Oh, you're putting the law around our necks for a few thousand. Well, I'm sure we can do the books ourselves, Jim. Why, there's no You've been to... doing the books your way too long, Watts. Uh, but your brother Scotty and I were just trying yeah, to... Yeah, I know. The... Scotty put friendship before business, but I don't. Oh, okay, Jim. There's no need of going loco. I'll uh, see what I can do for you before tomorrow. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe we won't need the auditors after all. If Shuffle pays up, then we can... Sorry, gentlemen. That's the way it is. These notes stay right here, Shuffle, till that 14000 is paid. I could put them in the safe, I Jim. I think they're safer with me, What? Now, if you don't mind, I'll bid you good day. Yeah, good day. Uh, see me tonight. Maybe I'll uh, have something for you. Any business we have, you'll find me right here. Uh, I got something I want to discuss with you, Jim. Later, Watts. Maybe tomorrow before I leave. Good day. Good day. Uh -huh. what you said, Jim, and I'm worried. Well, I would be too, Scotty, except I'm not in this alone. I've got the best backing a man ever had. You mean Sheriff Fletcher? Nope. Tomorrow morning, he'll get off the stage. He? 
I don't understand. The one man who can see us through this dirty mess. Hop along, Cassidy. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy and Hoppy Turns on the Heat. The Clover Springs Bank is in bad financial trouble and Jim Pierce knows it. His bedridden brother Scotty hasn't been able to keep a very tight rein on Watts, vice president of the bank, so Watts has been making mighty heavy loans to shuffle Duncan for his Red Gotter dance hall. Well, I... Yes, it's your move, what? Oh, but Shuffle, I, I had no knowledge that this Jim was coming here. He, he's upset the whole thing. How'd he get the notes? From the safe. You gotta get them, Watts. Me? Now look here, Shuffle, Duncan. I, I said you get them. You know, someday some smart hombre's gonna ask how old man Pierce's horse slipped down that ravine. You know that was an accident. Or it could have been bumped over. Well, that's the way you're gonna I'm take... not taking any way. We're both in this and there ain't no turning back. Well, what are you aiming to do? Me? I'm asking you the same thing. With some bank auditors breathing down my neck, I'd be doing some fast thinking if it was me. Well, they're not here yet. You know any way to stop them? Yeah. Yes, I do. Well, now you're getting smart. If Jim don't go to the city after them, they don't come, right? I'm thinking the same thing. I got a little article here, Watts, for just such a job. It's quiet. No. No, put that knife back in the drawer. Six guns, do no. I gotta think this out, Shuffle. What about me while you're thinking? Oh, I'll do something. <laughs> Margo, what do you want? Nothing. What makes you so jumpy? Close that door. Oh, what a pretty knife. How many times have I told you to knock before you come into my office? Hey, you are jumpy. I just don't like snoopers. That's uh, all. Now get out of here. We got a lot to straighten out before tomorrow. Oh, yeah, that's the day Jim Pierce goes to the city. Huh? How did you know? Me? <laughs> Why shouldn't I know? Jim and me are making some big plans together. Oh, it's Jim now, huh? Mm -hmm. First it's one and then the other. I wouldn't be counting on any plans, Margot. Did you ever stop to think maybe when Jim leaves town, he leaves you too? Yeah, that little Margot wasn't born yesterday. Well, nobody cares. Now get out of here and rehearse your dancing. You may have to fall back on it. You mean that Jim would get go out? Jim, she saw that knife. Oh, that don't matter. The only thing that's important is seeing that Jim Pierce never leaves town. Clover Springs sure looks different than it did ten years ago, Hoppy. Progress, California. <laughs> I bet Jim Pierce will be surprised when we don't get off on that stage. Well, Jim didn't go into detail. Just said to go to the sheriff's office. Well... Here we are. Yeah, I better tie it back to the office. Ooh, Tom. There. Now let's find out what we rode a hundred miles for. Hey, Billy, hop along. <laughs> Glad to see you, Sheriff. Well, and you too, you old walrus. How are you, California? <laughs> Can still lick my weight in jelly beans. Well, now, come on, just sit down and make yourself right at home. <laughs> uh, you come just in time when the town's busted wide open. Busted open? Yep, last night. Then we're a little late. Well, according to what you're expecting. I'm expecting to see Jim Pierce. Well, then you're, like I said, too late. Too late? Yep. Jim Pierce was killed last night. Knifed in the back. Scotty? Yeah, come on in. Mighty sorry I was late, Scotty. It was my brother, Hoppy. And I laid here 20 feet away when he was killed. Never able to help. Oh, well, now, better take it easy, fella. I heard him come in and... I... Heard who? If I knew, sir, help me, I'd invite him here and gun him down. Your father was my friend, Scotty. And I understand till we get whoever did this. When they come in, there was some whispering. I couldn't hear what was said. All of a sudden, I heard Jim gasp and somebody fell. I yelled. 
and just silence. I kept yelling till George Watts heard me and come in. George Watts? Why, well, we know him, Hoppy. Yeah, he's been with the bank for years, kind of took over after Dad left us. Who'd want to kill Jim? Well, plenty of folks, I guess. Jim walked into a tough situation here. Jim had some trouble? Well, I don't know if you'd call it trouble. What happened? Yesterday, Jim told George Watts and Shuffle Duncan he was bringing in the auditors. Was supposed to go to the city after him today. Shuffle Duncan? Yeah, the Red Garter Dance Hall. Watts let him borrow heavily from the bank to finance it. Well, we have to start somewhere, California. Shuffle Duncan's dance hall is the best place I know. But look out, they don't get your shirt. He's got some pretty clever girls working for him. Girls? Yeah, to help him fleece the miners. That's one of the girls, that picture there. Well, too darn pretty to be in a dance hall. Happy birthday to the only man I love, Margot. Hmm, she writes a good hand. Jim was very fond of her. Met her a month ago when he first got home. It was love at first sight. Well, we won't keep you talking, Scotty. You lie back down and relax. I feel like a rattler lying here, not able to move a leg. Well, doggone it, Scotty. You just forget it. Me and Humpy will do your leg work for you. And we have some to do right now, Scotty. We'll be back in an hour. After we take a look in Shuffle Duncan's place, it might be pretty interesting. <laughs> I don't see no reason why we gotta be sneaking around dark alleys. Thought you was going to the Red Garter Dance Hall. That's right where we're going, California. But a dance hall and a saloon are two places you can learn more out back than you can in front. Uh, this Watts fellow who heard Scotty yelling, how come he was the one who heard him? A good question, California, and one he might have trouble answering. He had as good reason as anybody to do the killing. Seems funny a man would use a knife. Yeah, doggone it, I've been thinking the same thing, Hoppy. Hmm. Ain't hardly dark, and business is booming. That must be the back door. Yep, the lights are shining through. Quick, California, behind this wagon. Someone's coming out. A girl. Hey, the girl in the picture. She's pretty frame on that doorway. Yeah. Heading for that dark place by the wagon shed. Keep your ears open. She's in the dark. Must be digging something up. Or burying something. Shh. She's coming back. Yeah, she's going back in. Okay, let's see. Come on, easy now. Yeah, let's see, she stopped right around here. Uh -huh. Fresh dirt, Hoppy. I can feel it. Good. Now, let's see what's so important that it has to be buried by dark. I got it, California. What is it, huh? A knife. A knife? Great horn toads. Why, that must be the knife Sheriff Fletcher's looking for. Well, darn, this sure settles the whole thing quick. I wish you were right, California. We found the knife, but we still have to find the killer. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Turns on the Heat. Jim Pierce telegraphed Hop Along Cassidy to come to Clover Springs to help him clear the bank's name. When Hoppy arrived, he found Jim had been knifed and killed in his home. George Watts, vice president of the bank, and Shuffle Duncan, owner of the Red Garter, along with Margot Temple, a dancer and girlfriend of the dead man, are all suspects. Well, Hoppy, now I got Margot in custody, too, but we ain't darn bit better off than we was before. Shuffle back there in his cell swears up and down Watts done it. Can't budge him. And what does Watts say? Ain't saying nothing. Can't find him. Well, now, that right there looks mighty darn bad for Watts. Well, then you see this gal bearing a knife, and if she didn't do it, Where'd she get the knife, and why was she burying it? Well, I may get an answer for you, Sheriff, if the young lady's in the talking mood. Shall we discuss a few things, little lady? I don't see no star on you. I'm a friend of Jim Pierce's. <laughs> Didn't know he had one outside of me. When they found Jim, he had this gold watch fob gripped in his hand with your picture in it. 
Anything wrong with my giving it to him? Nothing. Where did you get it? Oh, I'm a thief now. Look, bub, I paid $75 for that, and here's the receipt. I got it right here in my pocketbook. I believe you. Oh, no, you don't. Here, go on, read that. It's my receipt. I bought it four months ago right in town at Libby's. And it's a good thing I kept the bill. Mighty interesting. And I didn't kill Jim. I loved him. But not as much as you love Shuffle Duncan. What are you driving at? Nothing important. Well, you'll get nothing out of me, bub. I wouldn't be too sure. Thanks for the little talk. I'm sorry the accommodations aren't what you're used to. California, you sit out in the other room where you can watch the door while I talk to Scotty. We don't want to be surprised. Sure, sure, Hoppy. If anyone tries coming in this back door, I'm ready for him. I can still shoot. Well, I guarantee there ain't nobody coming in the front door. Not while I'm out here. Uh, you know what's happened up to now, Scotty. And you know we're doing everything we can to run down the killer. Is what still loose? He won't be for long. Now, let me ask you, Scotty. How old was Jim? Oh, if Jim had lived, he'd been 33 in four more months. A year and eight months younger than I. Mm-hmm. Now, Scotty, we're going to have to do something daring to get a confession from the killer. I want to warn you. It'll be mighty dangerous for you. Don't give me a thought, Hop Along. I'll do anything. What time does Mrs. Curtis come with your dinner? Six o'clock. Stays until eight. Then when she brings your breakfast, tell her not to come in this evening till I call for her. I'll sure do it. I don't want a soul near this house. I want this curtain down so no one can peek in. You got a plan? Yeah, I got a plan. I only hope it works. Uh, Dobbs trailed him to Center Pass, and that's where Watts holed up. Well, it shouldn't be hard to smoke him out. Yeah, like as not, he'll wait till dark to break out of them rocks. Yes, sir, just like I thought. It was Watts all the time. A while ago, you thought it was Shuffle. Well, uh, uh, yeah, but uh, Shuffle didn't make no break for it. Why, well, right there is a guilty man's move. Hey, looky on ahead there. Dobbs' kerchief on a stick. Yep, that's where Watts turned off. Dobbs marked it. Who? Oh, who there? Who oh, oh, there? Who? Oh. Yeah. Well, now, we better fan out, hadn't we? A good suggestion, Sheriff. Yeah, you can see Watts don't want no company. Well, we got to go in after him before dark. That's a job for a posse. Well, you got a better ID? If you have, trot it out. Okay. Watts? Watts, come out of that cave. You'll never put a noose around my neck. Watts, we mean business. Dobbs planted a charge of dynamite, and this fuse is just waiting for a match. Are you coming out? I'll give you ten seconds to make up your mind, Watts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, no, don't dynamite it. I'll come out. You worked like a charm. Now, kid, keep them hands up high, Watts. I'd rather talk him out than shoot him out. Well, now, 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 watch him close now. Another killing ain't going to worry him none. Get his guns, California. Stand right there. Got him, Hoppy. Well, let's ride, Watts. I didn't kill Jim Pierce. It was Shuffle Duncan. More of his dirty work. Well, Shuffle Duncan says the same thing about you. How come you're the one who heard Scott yelling? You don't live near there. I don't know that looks bad, but I had a reason to see Jim that night. You saw Jim? Yeah. I, I went in to see him, but he was already dead. Already dead? That's right. The mess at the bank had tormented me for weeks. I, I just couldn't stand it any longer, so... After dinner, I decided to go to Jim and take my medicine. When I got to his house, I didn't have the nerve to go in, so, well, I sat across the street trying to get up courage. How long did you sit there? Till it got dark. Dark kind of gave me courage, so I went over. I didn't want to wake Scotty knocking, so I opened the door, and, well, there he was. How'd you know he was dead? Well, he didn't move none, so, well, I walked around a bit, and then I heard Scotty yelling. I knew the poor kid was scared stiff, and I couldn't do that to him. Well, <laughs> you got it down pat, ain't you, Watts? Well, while you're thinking up some more, you can rest easy in a good, strong cell. Come on, boys. You got to trap this killer, Sheriff. And you know you got the right one. Oh, it don't make no sense to me. Well, there's no sense in the way things are now. How about trying my plan, Sheriff? 
Think it'll work? Think? I know it will. But you've got to do it my way. Well, what's your way? You let Margot shuffle and watch out on the street. Uh, turn them loose? After all trouble I had getting them in here? Oh, there ain't no place they can go. When they're loose, we set the trap. The killer walks into it, and there's your man, Sheriff. Yeah, or woman. Yeah, sounds loco to me. But I, I'm only doing it because you're responsible, Hoppy. I'm leaving now, Sheriff. As soon as it gets dark, turn them out. But one important thing. Well, well, what's that? Before you release him, tell him that Scotty can identify the voice he heard that night talking to his brother before he was knifed. Why, that means another killing. Scotty wouldn't see daylight. Now I see what you're aiming at, Hoppy. Scotty will be covered, Sheriff. Don't worry about that. I'll be there to greet the killer. Sure got dark quick, Hoppy. That's good. Sheriff. Right here? California and I are going in. You stay by the front door. But you're going to scare Scotty out of his skin. I'll tell him who it is. I'll stay right here. Come on, California. Let's go in. Who is it? It's Hoppy. Be quiet. I'll stay here in the parlor and watch the front door while you're talking. Right, California. Anyone been around yet, Scotty? Not a soul, but I'm ready for them. They're all out of jail. We're going back to meet the sheriff. I'll do my part, all right. Good luck, Scotty. Need anything? No, guess not. See you in the morning, Scotty. You bet, hop along. I'll close your door. Thanks. Good night, Scotty. Good night, Well, you've told him good night and shut his door. What are we standing here for? Shh. Let me have a match. Oh, sure. Here. What are you doing? Lighting it. There. Hoppy. Hoppy, you threw it in that tin wastebasket. Shh. Hey, I know smoke it. And I'm catching on fire. I know. Just let it burn. Please be quiet. But, Hoppy, the room's filling with smoke. Yeah, that's right. All them papers is burning. Be still. Oh, but doggone, I just can't stand here and let you burn the house down. I won't really burn the house down. Listen. All right, California, go get the sheriff. Tell him that we have the killer. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. Well, Hoppy, <laughs> who would ever think Scotty would kill his own brother? Jealousy, Sheriff, jealousy. You see, Margot tipped it off when she was here in jail. Yeah. <laughs> What'd she say? It isn't what she said. It's what she did when she showed me the receipt for that gold watch fob she gave Jim. It was four months old. Well, Doc, run, that didn't tell us anything. Of course it did. It did? She hadn't even met Jim four months ago. So it set us to thinking. She must have bought that fob for somebody else. Oh, that's what we were thinking. Sure. Then Scotty said Jim's birthday was three months away. And still, there's a picture of Margot in Pierce's bedroom which says, Happy birthday to the one only man I love. That meant only one thing. Yeah, <laughs> sure did. <laughs> what? It meant Margot gave her picture to Scotty before Jim came to town. Yeah, but what about Margot bearing the knife? Oh, she thought Shuffle Duncan was the killer. It appears she loved him a little bit, too. Scotty thought it was Jim she loved. Yeah, what a loving gal. Well, it still ain't too clear. Is there anything else we deduced? Just what Watts told us. Oh, you mean he told us something, too? He said he stood in front of the house for hours trying to get up courage to go in. During that time, no one entered, and yet Jim was murdered. So that means it was done inside the house, doesn't it? Well, of course it does. Any fool can see that. Not any fool. Uh, California. Well, the thing I couldn't figure was why you started that fire with a cripple in the house. Because that's one thing it'll move a man, if he can move. Fire. Yeah, but suppose he couldn't have moved. Then I'd have put the fire out. That was mighty dag blasted clever of you, Hoppy. You just turned on the heat and caught the killer. Me? Why, California. The sheriff here is the one who solved the whole thing. I've got to hand it to you, Sheriff. Oh, shucks, it just weren't nothing at all, no. Everything was just as plain as day. We just, uh, uh, 
turned on the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye from Hoppy in California. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Hoppy Turns on the Heat was written by Howard Swart. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Uh...